Tony, how's the cut on your eye? It looks to have healed very well. Yeah, it's healed really well, as you can see. You know, for the twenty for the twenty stitch gash, it's it's healed quite well. So I'm happy with how it is, and it's not going to be an issue in the fight. It's took a lot of bangs without head guards, with head guards. So you know, I'm in a good place, and uh, I'm happy with how it's healed. And I hear it was stitched twice. Is this true? What what exactly happened? Yeah, no, listen, they have to stitch the inside, the muscle, they have to stitch the outside. It was a really deep cut, so it, listen, it's part of the business that we're in. It's the uh, it, it's the pain game. And then and this sometimes you have to go through situations, but you know, I dealt with it. I was well prepared and uh, I got the job done. And uh, which eyebrow was it? Cuz I can't even see where it's gone. So it was the right one. It's healed quite well. And there's no danger of that opening up in the future and stuff? Well, the plastic surgeon tells me it was a complete one-off. And, and as I say, it's, it was just a freak incident. You know, touch wood, it doesn't happen again. But uh, I'll be fine. Listen, this, I'll go through whatever I have to go through to make it work. If I have to go through that again, so be it. I'll go through it. I'll do anything. I'll do whatever it takes to win. Because come fight night, I'll get in that ring. I'm willing to die. A cut's not going to stop me. And you said it's received a few knocks. I hear you've been out in America training. How did that go? It was great, you know, I always go to States now. It's uh, it's the best way to prepare. I need to get away from, you know, my comfort zone. I need to go to other people's backyard. It's uh, it, it's great, it's fantastic, it's work, it's business. And, you know, I know what I've got to do when I arrive at these places. And uh, since we last spoke, you've moved up to number one in the rankings. Um, I mean, this win, this is a must-win fight now, because then the world title next. Every fight that I'm in now is a must win, you know, I'm number one with the WBC and I've worked hard to get where I've got. You know, I'm nearly there, I'm within touch and distance, I can't afford to slip up against Chalamba. It's not just the, the pressure I put on myself that's on the line, there's an awful on that, I say, a shot at Chad Dawson, it is the ultimate goal. And uh, like I say, listen, I've got a family of three to feed, I've got to win, I have to win, and you know, whichever way that comes, I'll do it. The 30th is a big test. Well, Shalemba's been telling uh, Sky Sports that he's confident of a win. Mate, he's been avoiding saying he'll knock you out. Um, how, how do you see the fight going? I'm going to hurt him. It's as simple as that, just pain. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. It doesn't matter what he's going to do. At the end of the day, he knows he can't come to this city and run and try and steal a decision. He's going to have to come here and fight. And he's going to have to do that in front of between eight and 10,000 scousers going crazy. His trainer had nimbered him for the shock of their lives. He ain't never seen nothing like I don't care where he's been. He said he's going to build the people's backyard. He ain't seen scousers. He's never seen nothing like he's going to see on that night. On the 30th, the arena's going to go crazy. It's going to erupt. They're baying for blood, his blood, and I'm going to give to me. You said before that you get anger and nastier the closer you get to a fight. Are we okay right now? As you mentioned, his name just winds me up and annoys me. So, you know, listen, come fight night. I put the low blow on. I'm a nice person. I'm a good person. Once the low blow go goes on, come fight night. I just want to hear people. I just want to do as much destruction as possible, and I'll do it. I'll do it because I'm a nasty, evil person when I've got that low blow and them shorts on, and I'm going to do serious damage come the 30th of March. He touched on it just now, but tell us, what, the, what is the atmosphere going to be like in the Echo on the 30th? You're going to experience something you haven't experienced before. I've been at big fights now. It'll be something similar to what Carl had the 94 Beauty. I just... The, the, the ferocious, the fans here are just the, the, the great. They get behind me a hundred percent, but it's they're just different here. It, it, they're going to be so loud. There's going to be so many of them, and they're just not going to stop. They're really not going to stop. And we're nearly there now, so you know, just got to keep going and keep going. And with uh, Callan Smith, Thomas Stalker, and Rocky Fielding, it doesn't look like it's going. It looks like it's the first of many nights in Liverpool. Yeah, listen, we've got a great stable growing. Uh, these putting. You know, big cards together, stacked bills. And uh, I'd be a fool to say this card's selling because Tony Bellew's fighting. Listen, people want to come and see me, yeah. I'm not soft. I've, I've sold a thousand tickets personally. But at the same time, the card's deeply stacked. Crawler and Matthews is a massive fight. Fight of the year last year. There's plenty of big fights there. So, you know, it's not just me. Then you've got great prospects like Callum Smith coming through. No, it's a, it's it's an exciting time for Liverpool boxing, and the lads are coming through. They're all doing the job. They're all working hard, you know, and everyone's doing really well. So I'm happy that that Liverpool's now back on the map. The amateurs that we had, the great success that we've had, these guys are now turning pro and they're bringing it to the pro game. So you know, it, it's looking really good. And now you, you're a big fan of Twitter. You like getting your get, getting to chat to your fans through through your handle. Um, what do you think of Curtis Woodhouse's recent uh, events on Twitter? I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was great to put someone on the back foot and then really, you know, show 
that you can't speak to people and degrade people and you know and, and mess about with people's livelihoods you know his missus at the end of the day was scared of what this kid was saying so Curtis took it in his own hands and dealt with the situation and, and I commend him for it I'm not saying I condone violence of any of any degree because he didn't he, no violence happened he heard his views Curtis went up there and wanted to speak to him personally about it and the guy uh, simply pulled a quick move and that's why he's being called Jimmy Brown Pants so you know listen this is what happens This is you, you annoy people you get under people's skin you talk about them personally insult the family insult the profession then you know it comes with a price for every action there's a reaction and that guy got the reaction that he didn't want as you can see he went missing but you know I've also got to give him credit because it takes a big man to come out and apologise and the guy done it on national TV so, you know, you've got to give him credit too. And, uh, you know, hopefully he's learned his lesson and it stops these, uh, you know, lunatic keyboard warriors. So, you know, it's each to their own. So, and just quickly back to the uh, uh, Shalemba fight. Have you spoken with Eddie about what, what you would do, what, what's going to happen after the fight, you know, um, where your next move will be? All we think about is, is the March the 30th. March the 30th and, and taking Isaac Chalamba apart and destroying him and hurting him and leaving him in a place where he doesn't want to be. So that's all we can think about right now. Listen, what I'll be will be in the future. For now, it's all about me and Isaac Chalamba on the 30th. And we're here at Goodison Park. Um, you're from a big family of blues, aren't you? Yeah, me and my eldest brother and me, me I've got two elder brothers with, two, with three of us, are, are big, big Evertonians. My dad's unfortunately a copite. Uh, but that's changed over the years, you know, he wants Everton to do well now. So, you know, we're getting there slowly but surely. I'm just a normal City lad and a huge Everton fan. Coming here is, is surreal and I love this place and I've been coming here since I was a kid. So, you know, I really do love this place. It's great. All right, we'll do a quick Q&A about your uh, beloved Blues. Okay. All right, what was your first match you came to? First match I can remember off the top of my head is when Everton beat Liverpool and Peter Beardsley scored the goal and Mo Johnston as well. And what was your most memorable match? Most memorable match, I know it's not going to sound great to people, but I've been on that pitch at Goodison Park three times and only once legitimately. And the other two was uh, was after the game and one of them was Wimbledon. I'll just never, ever forget that game. I'll never, for as long as I live... Saturday season ticket was 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 in tears when we were losing, and it all just came back and and it was just I can't explain the emotion we went through that day. But like I say, it's just a special day, a great day. And where does people are going to say oh, relegation? But they don't understand. You know, I was there when we won the FA Cup in '95, but for some reason, you know, the the, uh, the Wimbledon game sticks with me. And are you much of a footballer? Uh, I like to think I am. I can strike a ball with both feet. I can uh, I can pass, you know. I'm not the quickest out the blocks, but I can strike a ball and I can use my head, so I'm not too bad. And do you have any pre-fight and pre-match rituals? Pre-fight rituals, I just like to put the left glove on first and I just like to get down and do business. I, I enjoy punching people in the face as hard as I possibly can and I enjoy doing it on a regular basis. And do you go to many away games? And if so, which is your favourite away game? Uh, I get to as many away games as I can. Uh, I've been to, to loads. This year, I enjoyed uh, Wigan away. I enjoyed that and I enjoyed Bolton away too. So I, I get to as many away games as I can. I just the only place I don't go is London. I don't travel to the London games away. Because as I say, you know, you've got to get back. It's a long trip and I've got to do training on a Monday or something else. But I get to as many away games as possible. World title or score the FA Cup winner? Do you think I enjoy getting punched in the face for about the 500th time to a journalist? Uh, listen, if I, if I had a choice and I could do it, I'd be an Everton footballer all day rather than get punched in the face for a living. So it's an easy answer. And who's your favourite current player? Favourite current player? It's not fair to say I've got a favourite current player. Uh, I'd say that... The guy who I enjoy watching the most, I'm not, I can't answer it. They're all my mates. They're all they're all close mates. They're all good lads. Uh, I'd say the the most standout guy for me this season has always been Ozzy Leon Osman. And who's your favourite Evertonian of all time? Duncan Ferguson. All right, a sugar daddy comes in with a hundred million, yeah. and he tells you, Tony, you've got to spend this, make the team better. What do you do? I give it all over to the gaffer, and the gaffer will do a lot better than me. <laughs> Well dodged. And uh, what's the I difference? I don't know what I'd do. Who I'd buy if I was given a hundred million? Who would I buy? Well, straight away I'd buy Cristiano Ronaldo, and I think that's the hundred million gone. So, 
he's the one who I'd buy. You couldn't buy Messi because I think he's got a hundred and fifty million price tag on his head. So I'm not touching him with a hundred million, but I believe I'd get Ronaldo for a hundred and well, for a hundred million I'd, I'd snap him up. And what's the difference between football and boxing fans? Uh, boxing fans are lunatics, football fans are bigger lunatics. So especially if you support this club, you've been through some hard times and you and uh, you an Everton fan, you're chosen. A football fan, you choose to be a boxing fan. But as a football fan, you're chosen. I, I was chosen to support Everton. Everton chose me. I didn't choose them. And who's the worst player to ever play for Everton? Slavin Bilic. <laughs> he annoys me. He winds me up. Because he took our club for the money and that annoys me. So, one of them things. And have you ever left a match early? I have, yes, sometimes. You know, recently, over the last two seasons, when we've been away, I've had to shoot out. And you know that both times I've done it, Everton have scored. So I think I just should come every game and then get off for five minutes to go because of Everton scored. Because getting out with the traffic is bad. And I say I've got my young kids waiting at home and the weekend is the only time I get a chance to spend with them. So I try to get home as, you know, as fast as possible. And that's it. So I have run out of a game quickly, yeah. Fourth spot, how, how do you rate your chances? The lads will fight till the death. It's really tough. Ask. Listen, you've got to understand Everton by what they spend and what the what the output is over the season is uh, is unlike any other club. I think we're the fourth lowest club in the whole league if you add our spending to our output. So when we sell players, when we buy players, I think we're the we're the fourth. I think Wigan might even be higher than Everton. So it's unbelievable the budget the gaffer's worked on, the job that he's done. But he gets as much back in here as he can from you, from you know the chairman and all the board. They do as best as they possibly can. They really are all working together, and it's tough. You know, you got these billionaire owners coming in and, and they're, they're just restructuring football. You know, Abramovich has done it. Now City are doing it, and, and it's it's a great testament to the team at Everton Football Club, the gaffer, the chairman, the the, the team overall to be where we are because. We are, we're not a billionaire club. We haven't got billions to spend on players. The City have. City have basically got an, a limitless pot. Chelsea have done the same. And, you know, for Everton to be competing anywhere near that level, Tottenham are spending daft money. It's everyone's doing it. And for Everton to be at the level they're at, it's amazing, it really is. And final question, would you like to swap places with, with David Moyes? Uh, the gaffer... I couldn't. I couldn't do that job. I really. I couldn't do it because you know me. I just. I love all the lads and the players. I'd be sending out like fifteen players every week, and the referee would be going, "Listen, you can't have fifteen players pitching." And I'd be going, "Well, you tell who. You tell the ones who've got to go off to go off." I just couldn't do it. He's got a really, really hard job ahead of him, and people just don't realise how tough it can be at times. And he's a great manager. He's first at the training ground, and he's last out. He's a fantastic manager, and what he's achieved and what he's done at this club. It's just it is unbelievable because, as I say, I've been coming here as a kid and when he came here, he took hold of a relegation dog-fighting team and he's turned us now into a really good football inside. We play good football, are on the cusp of Europe and it's amazing the job he's done. I don't believe any other manager in the world could have done the, could have done the job. David Moyes has done at Everton. I really don't, don't see that. Well, thank you very much, Tony, and best of luck on the 30th. Thanks very much for having me.